Rose really take Robert Scorpio to the Daughters of Ireland dance? That was the plan. Somehow, I just can't see Robert Scorpio doing an Irish trick. <laughs> Well, it's always the first time, I guess. You should try it, Heather. It's fun. That's what I should do. I should get you to teach me how to do an Irish jig. You'd like that, would you? Well, I'd like to share in every part of your life. That um, sounds good in theory, but there are certain areas of our lives that we've got to handle on our own. What are you talking about? Careers, for example. Getting ahead. I mean, that's something you pretty much have to do on your own. Well, that's not necessarily true. I mean, take me for an example. Well, I would never have gotten that job at General Hospital in admissions if Dr. Katz and Rick Weber hadn't helped me out. I suppose not. You better believe it. So, speaking of careers, how's your practice going? Business is good. That's wonderful. As a matter of fact, business is a little bit too good. I don't get it. Well, I've got a lot of applications from clients and introductions to clients coming my way, but they all seem to be coming from the same source. What's strange about that? They are all patients at General Hospital. So what? You're a terrific lawyer and word gets around quick. Not that quick. <clears throat> Joe, I think you're getting all these clients because you're very special. And you know what I think? I think I have a little guardian angel or someone who's looking out for me that works at General Hospital. Betty. Lord, you know what I realized? What? It takes as long to get your luggage as it does to fly from New York. <laughs> yeah, either that or they just lose it. Yeah, no, anything to make life miserable. Mm. Well, at least that's one thing that I don't have to worry about anymore. No, no, I meant what I said. I really want nothing but the best for you and Luke. I, I kind of proved that, you know, by giving me that legal document saying I will never, ever contest your Mexican divorce. You gave me peace of mind. Oh, God. Believe it or not, I feel better, too, you know? Maybe, you know what, maybe, maybe you and I can just we can be friends again, huh? I don't know about that. Uh, I'll have to talk to Luke. Uh, listen, uh, why don't uh, we share a uh, cab back to town? I don't think I should do that. I think Luke would be pretty upset if he saw the two of us together. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, why don't you uh, go on ahead and uh, do my best, Luke. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, before you go, uh, I'll kiss you goodbye. I I it, it'd just be kind of like, you know, sealing the agreement, you know? <sighs> Take care of yourself, okay? You too. Heading into town alone? Uh, yeah, I am. You know, it beats me why a beautiful lady like you would ever be without a man. Oh, well, uh... I, uh, I got an early flight, and then, uh, so I thought I'd surprise my husband. He would have been surprised, all right, if he would have seen you with this other guy. That's not an other guy. That's my ex-husband. Well, uh, any guy that uh, has a doll like you for a wife is a, is a lucky man. servant, madame, I complete the task. May the wrath of the devils fall upon the recipient's head. In the name of Mikos, in the name of Helena, the Cassadine curse upon thee, Lucas, Lorenzo, Spencer, forever and forever. Hold it! Freeze right where you are. <laughs> Yeah.
heard me, Maxwell. One move and I'll give you the heave-ho over the side. Where did you come from? <laughs> My boat. How long have you been there? I'm asking the question. Put that thing down. I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do it? Put it down, nice and slow. Now go away. Leave me alone. Not on your life, man. Go away, Spencer, before it's too late. Too late for what? Give me that thing. No! <laughs> I'm ever going to be able to figure out, Heather. What do you mean, Joe? Well, like, we're just in the middle of a conversation, and poof, she's gone. Here she comes now. Hi. Hi. Where did you get off to? Well, I was just upstairs in my room thinking. And when an Irishman starts to think that business is too good and worrying about it, well, I think it's time the little leprechaun was up to her tricks. You do, do you? Now I want you to close your eyes and put your hand in mine. What? All right, here you go. Feels good. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. What? It's a silver dollar. It was my good luck piece. I'm giving it to you. Uh, you know, I may be an Irishman, but I'm not all that lucky. Well, that's the craziest thing I've heard. What? I... Why? That a person as lucky as you should question your own good luck. Heather, I need the business. I really do. Don't make any mistake about that. But I am a professional. And I've got to be discriminating about who my clients are and how I get them. But Joe, I don't understand. I mean... What's the difference between one client or another? If, if they need your help and you can help them with their problems, I would think you'd be happy to take on their cases. There's a little bit more to it than that. Well, if they have the money and pay you, I Have don't you ever heard of an ambulance chaser? I don't think so. Well, very simply, an ambulance chaser is somebody that solicits clients by going after accident victims. What's so terrible about that? It's against the law, for one thing. Well, so is ripping the label off a mattress, Joe, but I don't think anyone's too worried about it. The really tends to look with a great deal of distaste upon ambulance chasers. As a matter of fact, when they catch them, they tend to disbar them. Joe, can't we talk about something else? No, because I haven't solved my problem yet. I want to find out the source of all these clients. Well, I don't know how I can help you. I want to know who's sending them to me. Quick, is there a back door to this place? Of course there's a back door. Which way is it? Well, you go through the kitchen, turn right the... Hey, wait a minute, mister. What are you doing? Where is he? Who? The guy with the glass? Yeah, where'd he go? He went through the kitchen. Hey, is everything all right? You need any help? I got it under control. Well, it doesn't look like he's got it under control. Joe, what are you going to do? Well, I am going to go out there and try and find out what's going on. Excuse me. Don't tell me you're going out the back door, too. No, I think I'm going to go upstairs. Tell Joe I left. Sure. I'll only be gone a few minutes. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Did you find out anything? Oh, I went back out there and there's nobody there. They're both gone. Well, I thought you said it was going to be a quiet night, Joe. <laughs> it started out that way. Where's Heather? Oh, uh, she went upstairs. Right in the middle of a conversation. She said she was going to be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, what am I looking for? Can I have another cup of coffee? Sure. Ooh. Dr. Katz? Oh, hello, Joe. Oh, it's brisk out there. Hmm. Well, this is a first. Yeah, well, you see, I missed dinner. I couldn't sleep, and I heard so much about this place, I thought I would give it a try. Oh, good man. It's the uh, best food in town. Yeah, that's what they say. Is it uh, true what I hear about the clam chowder? Hmm? As a matter of fact, it is. Uh, I'll have Martha get you. Uh, Martha, would you bring Dr. Katz a cup of clam chowder, please? Okay. Thank you. Dad, this, Thank please, you. Please sit down. Oh. Let me help you with your coat. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just put it here. Yeah, do you, uh... Would, would you mind if I just kept your company for a little while? <laughs> a cup of chowder, a cup of coffee, and now, huh? 
Who could ask for anything more, right? Correct. So, <clears throat> about this chowder. I want to talk to you. Come on, Maxwell. Hey. Hey, didn't I, uh, didn't I help you out? Didn't I help you when you, uh, needed to hide? Come on, I don't want to hurt you at all. I, I just want you to answer me a couple of questions. And then, uh, then you can go. I wouldn't try to stop you. Damn right you won't stop me. I see you got more to hide than I thought. Shut up. Who are you? Helena Cassadine sent you, didn't she? I'm warning you, Spencer. What were you doing to the model of the Titan? What were you doing there on my... <laughs> Is good soup. Mm. Yeah, I grew up on that. Mm. Interesting atmosphere down here, too. It's fascinating, isn't it? Uh, a waterfront area. I mean, any waterfront area is like a like a little world unto itself. Well, you'll, you'll have to come down more often, then. Oh, I intend to. I think it's a perfect place for me to practice my hobby of people watching. Oh, yeah, we get all kinds in here, really. Mm. I guess I shouldn't be too amazed about it, though. I've lived here most of my life. I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, and you must enjoy it. Things have really livened up here now that Heather's moved in. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, why does that sound like a leading statement, Joe? Uh, because I was trying to get the topic of conversation around to Heather. Yeah, I think I knew that the minute I walked through that door. Am I that transparent? <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. I was bragging about my perception as a people watcher. And as a top-notch psychiatrist? Well, and as a top-notch psychiatrist who happens to be Heather's psychiatrist, yeah. Touche. Mm. There have been some problems, some things about Heather that have been bothering uh, wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. Joe, listen, I'm, um... I'm really more than willing to listen to anything you have to tell me, but I have to warn you that it would be totally unprofessional and absolutely unethical for me to discuss anything about Heather. The confidences that she and I share have to remain that. Confidences. Absolutely, I understand. Okay. Well, so then I, as I said, I'm very happy to hear about anything that's troubling you. I guess you're right. It's my mind that's being troubled, isn't it? Well, all I need is a... A cup of coffee, and I'm your captive audience. Hello? How did you know to do that? <laughs> well, uh... How did she know to do that? <laughs> you beating your chest as a top-notch people watcher. She's a world-class psychiatrist watcher. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were almost saying... Yeah, well, it, uh... Yeah, what? Go ahead. Bottom line, no matter what Heather does, no matter how deceitful, duplicit, how stupid she can be, I just gotta hang in there with her. I... You have anything specific that you're trying to get at, Joe? She's going around the hospital soliciting clients for me. 
Did that disturb you? Well, slightly illegal, Doctor. Oh, I know that, Mr. Attorney. I know it's slightly illegal, but I also happen to think there's something more that you're not talking about. Well, I mean, that's hardly the kind of practice I've wanted. Uh, hardly the, the dream I've built ever since before that clam chowder was invented. Don't stop now. Keep going, would you please? I wanted to fess up. I, I mean, if we're going to have any kind of relationship, she and I, she's, she's going to have to face what she's doing and, and, and respect me for what I am. You think she doesn't respect you? Well, obviously not. She's going around ambulance chasing for me. And you've talked to Heather about this, right? Well, we've... We've talked around it. We didn't really talk about it because I want her to admit it. I want her to face what she's doing wrong. But all she does is sit there and grin or else try and act concerned, and she plays her little mind games with me. And what are you doing, Joe? Well, I'm angry. I'm... I'm breastfeeding a little bit, I guess. Well, the next logical question is why? Because I want the woman. I want her to be a... I want her to be the perfect woman in my life. Mm-hmm. Hear what you said? A little bit of ego there. Wouldn't you say? Oh, now, listen, you're doing great. Don't start asking me. Just keep telling me. Keep going. It's ego. Mm -hmm. Because I want to prove to the world that they were wrong about Heather and that I was right. Do you suppose that's why I haven't gotten through to her? Uh, 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 no questions. No questions. Just tell me. That, Doctor, is why I haven't been able to get through to her. You know, it's a natural instinct to think of ourselves first. I happen to believe that the right kind of selfishness is not a bad thing. And don't think you're the first guy who's tried to shape the world in his own image, because you're not. But it's only fair to others and ultimately to ourselves if we put their personalities into a more realistic perspective. Hmm? Well, I haven't been doing that. I've been trying to use Heather as a, an extension of my own ability to do good instead of letting Heather do good or bad <laughs> with all her flaws. Hmm. You're asking a lot from yourself, Joe. I always do. And I don't mind. I guess I should start minding asking others to do the same, though. You're dealing with someone you care for very much. You're good. Uh, you're all right. Mm. Thanks, Doctor. No, no. No, no. Don't you thank me. You did all the work, my friend. And you did it all by yourself.
Lock the door. You're the guy from the boat. Yeah, Kurt Maxwell. I figured you'd remember the face before the name. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, you never know in this line of work, but you and I are on the same side, right? Yeah, so do me a favor. Lock the door. What's the matter here? We're we expecting company? I wouldn't take any bets against it. Hey, look, what's going on? I need your help, like you promised me on the boat. Who's after you? Luke Spencer. Look, just wait a minute. No, no, you wait a minute. You're not going to back down on me now. Look, I hate Spencer just as much as you do. Oh, that's the basis of our relationship. It's just one little problem. You happen to be in hot water with him right now. Oh, yeah? What happened? Never mind. So what are you so afraid of, huh? I'm not afraid of him. Good. Because you told me we were on the same side. I meant it. All right, so get your act together. Help me beat that creep. What do you want me to do? Come up with some way to get Spencer off my trail. Look, you haven't even told me why he's on your trail. Listen, Paul, when I haven't got time for the third degree, I need your help and I need it fast. Now just help me get away from Luke Spencer! Did, uh, <laughs> somebody just come in here? Yeah, the night custodian came on duty. Anybody else? Not to my knowledge. At least not in the last hour. Uh, Scott Baldwin in? Mr. Baldwin's been back for quite some time. Would you like me to ring his room? Oh, no. No, thanks. Don't bother. Now, is there a back entrance to this hotel? There are several entrances in the alleys. Uh-huh. Well, I'm, there's one particular alley that I'm thinking of. It's the one that's right across from that uh, abandoned warehouse. Yeah, there's an alley. Uh, there's an entrance there. There is. Fire regulations require it. Uh-huh. Could somebody get in that way? Of course not. They could only get out. Don't you know anything about fire precaution? The door's got to be locked at all times from the outside. Oh. Uh, I bet it isn't locked right now. Mm. Impossible. I'm a betting man. I'll tell you what. I'll give you 20 bucks. And I'll say that 20 bucks says that it's not locked. $20? Uh-huh. I tell you what, why don't you keep it? Take it and keep it. And uh, I'll sweeten it with another 20 bucks if you're right. Mister, I know a deal when I hear one. I will be right back as soon as I check it out. All right. 